Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we live full time right here in this RV truck camper setup. And it's been a year since we did a rig walk around and review of our truck camper. And we want to update that and show you any things we fixed, what's working for us and what's not, but how we live like this full time with no backup plan and no house, property, land, anything. What you see is where we live and what we have. Let's start with a truck. That's the base of everything and it'll be the quickest to go over. So let's just go over the truck really quick. For us, we went with a 2001 7.3 Power Stroke V8 diesel. The only reason we went with this, we're not brand loyalists or anything like that. The 7.3 has a great reputation. There's parts all over for these trucks, but the big reason is because my brother owned this truck and I got a good deal on it. Um, so it's not like, you know, 5.9 Cummins, thumbs down, V10 Tritons, thumbs down, or whatever tow vehicle you use. We just po chose this because we got a good deal on it. Um, this truck is pretty stock. It does have the camper package on it from the factory, which I think on these trucks in 2001, uh, I think they put the F350 front springs under it. Also on this truck, you can see the wheels and tires are not from a 2001. These are from a later year model, maybe 08 or 2011, I'm not sure, but these are 20 inch wheels. And um, these tires here, the metric equivalent is about 34, 35 inch. Um, the reason we didn't go any bigger than this is because where the spare tire goes, I wanted the spare to match. And this is the biggest size spare that I could get underneath this truck. Let's see how close the spare tire is to the exhaust right here. That's pretty close. I made a heat shield out of a piece of uh, flashing off the side of a house and then wrapped it around so that it blocks the exhaust from the tire and i checked it i tested it It doesn't get warm back here um, so it just barely fits that tire is right up against the hitch you're not getting anything bigger in the spare tire location and i like them because it gives you lots of ground clearance um, as you can see here uh, you have that much ground clearance uh, which has uh, been super helpful for us this truck also has uh, manual hubs it was converted from the vacuum hubs these old trucks that's not super reliable so this has the manual locking hubs now uh, which has been awesome and we've had no problem out of them under the hood look at that isn't that so nice if you've been around old beater cars a lot you know how nice it is to have working struts Um, under the hood, this is pretty much bone stock 7.3, stock turbo, stock injectors. The only real upgrades it has is it has a S&B intake, a cold air intake to help it breathe and try to keep the temperatures down a little bit. With S&B, you can either get the oil filled, like a kind of like a K&N filter, you know, that's a little bit sticky. We went with the paper version just because it's very dusty where we've been driving. And then on top of the paper filter here, we have a filter cover that I love because I can vacuum it off. I can just pull the filter cover off and I can wash it in the sink and let it dry for a couple days and I throw it back on and the filter's like brand new. And then it has a full stainless steel exhaust with no muffler or anything like that. And these old trucks don't have any kind of uh, emissions or catalytic converters or anything. And, and it does have a hydro tuner, which we usually leave in daily driver or eco is the two modes we live in. And it has plenty of power for us. These are known to be slow trucks. Slow, but torquey. Yeah, plenty of torque. Truck has about 180,000 miles on it and uh, doesn't even leak any oil. I run Shell Rotella T5, 15W40 in this, and I change the oil. I try to get it changed before every 5,000 miles. I know a lot of these old diesels are bad to have blow by and then uh, change the fuel, the fuel filter uh, on top of the engine every other oil change. On the back half of the truck, the only things that we have really done is we have these torque lift tie downs, which are awesome. Um, goes in here and there's a pin that holds it in. The reason I've got this one out right now is because to put our legs down, these have to come out, but it's super easy because the only thing holds it in is a pin. And then I can slide this out and I can put my legs down. We only drop the legs like this if we're gonna be somewhere for a while. We've been in the spot we're at right now for about two weeks. And when you walk around in the back of the truck, it just keeps it from rocking around. If we're just cruising and staying somewhere for a day or two, I never drop these legs ever. Uh, but if we're gonna be somewhere for a while, then I drop them. We have our torque lift fast guns here. You can see the stickers coming off. These things have been awesome. They've been around saltwater in North Carolina, Mexico, and Texas. They're stainless steel, powder coated. I know some people have problems with their tie downs block their fuel. That, that's not the case for us, but if it was, it'd be so handy because you just flip this and you can do your fuel and then you're back to go. One thing we did have to do, these old Super Duties are very well known for the bed rails to, to rot out. And the, the bed rails are just the braces that go perpendicular across the bed to give it 
stability and support and it's how they mount to the frame rails and ours rusted out the frame rails are good and everything else was good but the actual bed rails rusted out and that was a bear of a job all the shops turned it down um, we did it about a year ago and uh, with some help of friends and family we pulled it off and cut the old ones off and welded some new ones in so this thing should be good forever now staying back here uh, the leaf springs we just had these upgraded about two months ago and that has been the number one best upgrade we've done to this truck since we have owned this setup we did a, a plus two leaf pack in the back and it picked the back end of about four inches higher and uh, with the leaf springs on each side installed was only like fourteen hundred dollars so there's I, six by ones yeah six by ones i think the original on here were four by ones it eliminated almost any sway um, it rides so much better now inside here we have timbrin stabilizers those helped out a lot when we had the original suspension because we'd go around a corner or something and that rubber it's basically a big bump stop uh, that sits on that sits uh, just above the axle and when the axle comes up it touches it and it keeps it from compressing too much on one side and keeps it from rolling too much it adds a lot of stability but with these new leaf springs they sit about that far above the timbrens and i don't think they ever touch them the last thing on the front of this truck you can see we have this big box and it's got pull holders it's where we carry our five gallons extra diesel and five gallons extra gasoline which is super handy for uh, the generator and the motorcycles and then this is super handy for the diesel heater or just some backup fuel for the truck and it's all sitting on the steel platform here and how that's able to be done is we have a front hitch so this was usually sold to go on the rear of a vehicle and if you see a lot of truck campers they a lot of them have this and it's because they installed a hitch on the front so this front hitch um, wasn't a terrible installation just uh, have to drill drill some big holes in your frame and then mount it in this thing has been awesome because sometimes we haul a motorcycle up here and then sometimes we have this basket up here which is super nice because we have this big contico box that we've had for years and it's got four big bolts lag bolts in the bottom that bolt it to this cheap harbor freight basket and that is my tools it's a mess right now but this is where we carry our tools and our generator our champion generator fits in here with our tools and then it stays watertight and, and it then, locks and it locks you can lock it and you can also, I use this for, uh, we have a portable grill. It gives me a, a, a place to work. When you're out living like this in the desert, you live in a truck camper, you, you don't have somewhere to work, a nice flat place that's out of the dirt, dust and sand, so handy. We don't live anywhere and I, I keep saying that because we keep getting comments like, why do you guys pull all this stuff around? Why do you have so much stuff and so many tools and you know, you're, you're not doing it right? Well, it's because most people on YouTube. Again, I don't like to throw shade, but let me get my umbrella out here for a minute. Most people just do it for like a weekend or two and then they go back to their big house or their parents' house or whatever. Everything we have is here. Tools, cars, vehicles. So that's why we have so much stuff and I just want to reiterate it because we always get comments like, why don't you leave that at home? Or why don't you do that? We don't have a home. We don't own property. We don't have anything. We don't have so, a rental house. Yeah, we don't have a rental house that we store stuff. We, we don't have any of that stuff. So the reason we have our boat back here or anything like that, or why we have the e-bikes and the motorcycles and we have all this stuff is because there's nowhere else to put it. This is, this is the most realistic, like we live full-time in a camper that we can show. And one more thing about having a truck camper is um, you can pull a trailer. So getting back to that is we have a boat trailer and we have a small three rail motorcycle trailer that we use for our e-bikes and we use for our CRF 300 and we have a Bergman uh, 400 scooter that we also use. A truck camper super cool because you can still pull a trailer and on ours you can get these big uh, truss rod very expensive and heavy duty extensions that you can pull like 10,000 pounds. We just have this little 18 inch extension and it's still good for 3,500 pounds. Um, which is plenty enough for our boat. So hiding behind the frame, you know, they always say like Instagram versus real life. You turn the camera around, it's a mess. This is the mess. So back here we have our boat, which is uh, chained to our generator. And uh, we use it as storage when we're not using it. And then we also use it for fishing. Uh, this mud right here is from the Colorado River. We just had it in the water yesterday. So our Bergman's a good commuter. You get like 80 miles per gallon. We have our little three rail motorcycle trailer. And then back here we have uh, the run to the litter, which is our 2008 Honda Ridgeline, which has seen better days, but it's still trucking along just fine. Um, we literally haul around dead weight um, because we uh, still stay active and stay in shape, even though we live in a camper. I always bring it with us, so I never have an excuse. There's always weights, there's always jump ropes, there's always a place to go run, there's a place to do push ups and sit ups. Um, so we always exercise. So that comes with us everywhere we go because, again, there's no house to keep it at. We don't have gym memberships anywhere. Um, so that's why this looks like a cluttered mess. We have tools to work on cars, motorcycles, boats, patch kits, jacks, stands, jack stands. We have 
all the things because we need all the things because we live in modern society like no regular people. <laughs> it, we're not just on vacation 24-7 like I think some channels are. So, And I think now we're going to go over, let Elizabeth go over the camper and kind of how we do things with the camper. Power, water, um, some upgrades that we've done to it, some, some faults we've seen in it, and some things we've learned. This is our 2006 850 SC truck camper by Northstar. SC just means self-contained, which means it has self-contained features like a toilet and a gray water tank and a fresh water tank. You can see that it's a pop-up and this canvas has lasted pretty good for it being um, almost a 20 year old camper. We have zero leaks as far as the canvas is concerned and very tiny, tiny holes in like one or two of the corners. So the canvas itself has lasted a, a great amount of time, um, especially this past year when we put it through all conditions outside without any covering whatsoever. This little piece of uh, weather stripping has started to fall down, um, but that's the only really failure outside. Starting on this side, this is our fresh water fill for our tank inside that's approximately 30 gallons. And that's why we have this tub right here. This is a six gallon fresh water portable container. So we'll fill this when we're in town or running errands. And we can just kind of top off six gallons at a time because we don't go through a lot of water since we don't shower every single day. And we use disposable dishware. And then standing right next to me is our outdoor shower tent. So the lovely thing about this camper is it not only has a shower inside, but it has a shower outside. And we use them interchangeably just depending on where we are and the weather. So you can see here, this is the shower door with the hose and the shower nozzle. And you have hot and cold water out here. What we've found is that this door swings open <laughs> and has been melted slightly by our Heater exhaust, this is a diesel heater exhaust, and uh, the wind blew this open and melted a nice hole in there. But uh, it functions the same, it just doesn't look very good. <laughs> so this tent has a roll-up door, and we have two bin lids that we use as kind of like stepping platforms to stay out of the dirt. And then inside is a storage bin that we use as like a shower basin. So you stand in there and that keeps you out of the dirt and then you can see how much water you're consuming which is nice and once you're done you can just pour it out onto the ground because it's just water and uh, biodegradable soap. This is plenty tall for bathing and then we have some clothes pins to hang up some clothes or a towel to give you another wall if you're not in a completely private area. Um, and this holds your shower head while you're kind of going on and off with the shower. This has a feature to turn the water flow on and off while still maintaining water pressure inside. Um, these aren't completely leak proof. They do kind of dribble a little bit while there's pressure, but it's not too bad if you're outside. This repair is holding up really well. If you watch the channel, when we were in Baja, Mexico, this wood under here where the original, this is the original frame mount. Um, ripped out. We went over a speed bump that was unmarked uh, and we hit the bump. I guess the trailer went up just enough to rip this out. Uh, the torque lift frame mount tie down fell and hit the ground and that's what made us pull over because we saw that I thought saw that thing in the rearview mirror and so what I did is I drilled two holes through the side of the camper. I, put, I made a steel bracket on the bottom. I've made a steel plate and on the inside there's a steel plate and it sandwiches together and makes an L on the inside of here it makes an L shape to follow this angle and then bolts right here. And this thing's held up. It's been on here for a year. I've been very, I was very nervous about it after about a month and then I stopped thinking about it. This thing's been absolutely rock solid. So that's still holding up and doesn't leak. It might be more reliable than the other three corners. It might be, it's very strong. <laughs> this says EBJ on it because this is our e-bike juice powering station. You can see this lovely uh, outlet cover. <laughs> it, it don't look like it's up to code of any state except maybe Arkansas. That might be up to Arkansas's code. It's rough looking, but it does work and it don't shock you. It does work and uh, it doesn't leak any water into it. And it's super handy because you can just park your e-bike right, right here, here. and uh, the little cord reaches perfect. So you'll see when we go inside that this stores a sewer hose for the gray water and it actually sits in the floor of what we use as a pantry. We never access this. It just exists there. 
Uh, but we do use this a lot. So this is an outdoor storage area that is mainly for our diesel heater. So this is the tank for the diesel heater. It's 10 liters and our diesel heater sips diesel so we don't really have to access this too much but there is a bit of space in the front that we store our extension cords sunscreen bug repellent and extra stuff coming around to this side you can see our power setup so a lot of different rv and truck life channels kind of do this differently and it's going to depend on whether or not you're living full time or just kind of going out on the weekends and you have a home base but this is our current setup we have an opus power bank this is their new mega 2 series and we also got 240 watt solar panels to go along with this but this is an amazing power bank for rvers specifically because of this port right here it has a 30 amp port so you don't have to use any converters because we have two uh, we have a 30 amp and we have a 50 amp to go from a 30 amp and we don't have to use those we can plug straight in so right now during the day of course here in uh, beautiful sunny southern california uh, we're using solar and right now we're getting about 115 watts because the sun is slightly behind a cloud and then let's say if we weren't to have a lot of sun or we were drawing heavy power that day, uploading a video and recharging e-bikes and stuff. We can fire up our champion generator. So we keep this plugged in with an extension cord. And anytime we're running low on battery or doing very consumptive, uh, power hungry activities, we can just flip this champion generator on and it charges that unit in only a couple hours if it was down to zero. We kind of do a hybrid power system. Even though this champion generator is really quiet and it, this, little, this little generator only weighs like 40 pounds and it's really quiet. It's a pure sine wave inverter generator, but we only have to run it like two hours a day because this Opus power station has fast charging. So we can run a full day of doing everything we need to in pure silence and only have to listen to that little yellow monster over there for about two hours. Some people like to go the route of getting some Battleborn batteries and filling their camper full of lithium. The reason I like this is because this is portable and this is change changeable. I can grab this thing and I can throw it in that boat if we're going camping. I can take it tent camping. I can grab it and take it into the Honda if we're, if we're doing something in it. I just like it because it's so portable. The price of going with all of those batteries and the installation and the inverter process is very expensive. Those huge batteries are very expensive. They weigh a lot and they take up a lot of space. We don't have a lot of space in this camper as it is. So to install multiple heavy, large batteries is just not something that we were even interested in where you can just have this for a fraction of the price. The reason I like this hybrid system is because you know two is one one is none if you're completely reliant reliant on solar that's fine if you're just going camping for the weekend but if you live this full time like we do that sun is not always out sometimes it's rainy overcast whatever some days you need a whole lot of power so it's just a backup to a backup to a backup uh, and so i just like not being hamstrung by tied solely to solar, tied solely to a generator. For us in the last year, this has been the perfect setup that it has seemed to cover all the gaps. Yeah, have a solar panel with a battery bank and a generator. That's it, that's all you really need. Moving on to this side, we don't stay in one place for too long, so we haven't had the chance to feature this awning much, but this is an ARB awning. It rolls out really fast and it has two swing arms that come out and two legs that pop down and it is amazing and it has a little built-in light that actually plugs into a 12 volt inside and it provides a fair bit of light outside if you were wanting to hang out but we exclusively use it as a cover for all of our fun toys to kind of kind of keep them out of the sun and the rain we can't avoid the dust in the desert but at least uh minimizes the impact of the solar rays you can come out <laughs> oh no our eyeball fell off <laughs> No, it's only got one eye. Only one Google eye left. <laughs> also, what we're standing on is a sand mat. We found these when we bought the truck camper and they work well in desert and beach. So uh, basically this dust falls through these holes and all you're left with is rocks that you can just sweep off and it keeps everything much more clean. You can see where I burned it. <laughs> it's orange on one side and green on the other, but it's a good example of what this is. It's like a net. It's like a very finely woven net. So all the little sand and dust goes through, water goes through, it doesn't stay wet, it dries really quick. That was a 
plate that caught on fire. Yeah, it was a paper plate caught on fire and made a smiley face. <laughs> so it's always happy to see us. All right, inside. <laughs> First thing that you will notice coming in for our biggest upgrade will be to your left, my right, and it is a 42 inch TV. Chris made a custom bracket for the mount that goes on the structural arm of the canvas pop up. After these two wing nuts are loosened up, it just is flexed on here by gravity, and then this thing comes down. We lay it on the bed and there's no tools needed and it's really quick. And then the PlayStation 5, it just sits up there. It's not got any tools either. It just, they unplug oh, from each other and they both just lay right here on the bed while we drive. It's like this camper was made for a PS5 to fit because it fits perfectly behind the vanity. <laughs> I don't know how that ended up working out, but it's perfect and it's never in the way. And all of the cords kind of just run down onto the shelf. So the limiting factor in this camper, we have the power situation figured out, but there are only two spaces for outlets. One is right here by the stove, and the other one is right here in front of the sink. Uh, I would say that they're pretty inconvenient locations, so we have this surge protector running from the sink over here on this shelf. And this is also our one 12 volt port inside that runs the awning. If we want to, the light built into the awning or just a 12 volt charger for phones. Under here, we do have a lead acid battery and a, a solar setup on the roof as well. So this is the cables going up onto the roof. There's 200 watts of solar up there. And all that battery does is power these lights. It powers our water pump right here. And that's pretty much it. And it'll run our diesel heater, which is located behind this screen here. And I yeah. like having that stuff completely separate. We don't have to plug in anything, move around anything. It's just good to go. Back here, we have our little four gallon beverage buddy. This is a recent upgrade. We've spent a lot of time in a camper. I get annoyed listening to the water pump. So for just drinking water, I like to use this. And the other nice thing about this is any Walmart or a lot of gas stations or water refill areas, I can just grab this and go refill it. Sometimes it's really hard to find when you're boondocking somewhere where you can pull up your truck and camper, hook in a hose and get 30 gallons of water, but you can find a place, a, a spigot everywhere you can refill your four gallons. We've mentioned that this dinette area, uh, this, it's actually a table and a stand. I think we've used it once as a table in the past year. It almost exclusively stays like a giant couch. One, because of the dog. This is her sleeping area, as you can tell. But it's very annoying to find a place to move the cushion, put it out of the way, then put the bar up, then put the table up, and you have to collapse it up and down and there's not a lot of space to move around it. So we keep it as a couch and then underneath, you actually have a storage area now that you otherwise wouldn't have because it's supposed to be for your feet. So we store shoes under there and the air fryer. You can see in this camper, we've changed virtually nothing as far as the uh, aesthetics of the camper. This is the original seat cushions that came in it in 2006 with the banister. And um, I think even the mattress is the original mattress. Uh, we don't really care about what things look like uh it's just functional i would rather put money and effort towards um fixing things or having fun versus just like what things look like but there are very popular build series on truck campers and van life where people get thousands of views for build outs and that's probably a bad decision on our part for not making this more beautiful and fun <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's just something that's never been on the top of our list to like redo the cabinetry and paint it and redo cushions and stuff. It's just, we don't really care. It functions how it's supposed to. But we do have some upgrades. This, after 20 years, started leaking. So we got a new sink. Look at that. It's wow. shiny and it, it does water. 
Um, we also upgraded in our shower. Mono, can I please? Can I please? Can I please do this? Okay, goodbye. We did upgrade our shower because it also started leaking. A lot of these RVs have these very stiff shower hoses in them. I don't know why, but this thing is super, I mean, you can barely bend that super stiff. And this joint that it goes into is made out of plastic. So when you're trying to shower in there and this is flexing around with this old hose, it cracks this. So we got a new, also shiny, shiny painted plastic uh, and installed it to fix the leak. And then we got this um, flexible metal stainless steel hose line to prevent that from putting so much pressure here. And that's been a fantastic upgrade. We also have this $2 cup holder and you can move it. Sometimes Chris will slide it in there. Let's say you got your PlayStation going <laughs> and uh, you got a drink or you got a drink right here. Otherwise you got to reach up all the way here to get your cup. Look you at that. You can't do that. Change it or here. Look at that. <laughs> the other thing we use the shower for is it can be used as a seat. I did sit in here the other day because the dog was taking up the seat. And it is honestly because we don't use this as a bathroom, uh, the toilet. And then you just flip your cup holder around in there. Look how <laughs> versatile that is. This is the way I was That's saying. That's so last versatile. Time. <laughs> and again, you'll see why we really like a soft sided pop up, pop up camper. Let's look at the mountains in the background, all the light coming in, the breeze. Um, just so nice and it's in every direction 360 all the way around views sunlight another issue that's been popping up in some other channels is mold uh we've only had a short stint of mold problems in this camper and that was when we were in western north carolina where it was raining a lot and we weren't able to pop the top and let the canvas dry out because it was just constantly wet. So it not only removed the mold that was growing, but it was a preventative for mold growing in the future. We haven't had any mold problems under here. We sprayed under here and check it, lift it up and uh, double check every once in a while and flip the mattress. All right, so that's pretty much it. The only issues we've had were the leaf springs gave up the ghost, but those leaf springs are 20 something years old and we got some new upgraded ones. Uh, we had a couple of water leaks with our faucet, each one of the faucets giving out, but we, we got the replacements for both of those at uh, Ace Hardware, and that was super easy to get. We've really had no problems out of this old North Star truck camper. No, it's been old reliable for a year of putting it through everything. In the truck, we've only had one issue. It was leaking some diesel fuel, which was causing the clutch to leak, to slip just a little bit as it was running down the valley into the over the back of the bell housing. Um, but one quick repair on the fuel bowl and that was it. So pretty much the fuel bowl repair, some leaf springs and a couple of faucets is all we've really done in a year. And this thing has been up, the sides have been up in the sun. I've been very worried about it, but for a year and they don't seem any different than they were when we bought it no. a year or two ago. And uh, she seems to really like it out here on her sand mat uh, overlooking her Serengeti plane here. But I think that's gonna wrap it up uh, for us here today. Um, so hopefully you saw something here that maybe you would like to steal an idea or two because I steal ideas from people all the time. Or this made you decide this is not the setup that I want, <laughs> which is also fine. Uh, if, if I was you and I was in the market, uh, I would highly recommend this North Star truck camper. I would also highly recommend getting a newer one that has electric jacks and an electric lift system. The lift system and these old ones sucks. The, the gears wear out all the time. You always have to get a new handle, but the new ones are electric and that goes away. Yeah. Um, Having electric jacks would be really nice if you were if you had the money to spend and get a newer one. But other than that, they're, they're, the campers haven't changed much. And uh, I would highly recommend our, our three-way power system. This power bank um, versus some of the other competitors, it is fairly inexpensive compared to some of the other competitors. Um, and it has a very nice warranty on it. So if anything does happen within the next two years, there's a warranty on that. They did send us that power bank for free, but we are not paid in any way. We have no, like, they don't send us money for showing it. They just sent us one. Yeah. Um, and it is holding up super nice. So if you're looking for a power bank, go check that one out. If you're not looking for a power bank, don't go check it out. Just show them our cool rock collection we got out here in the sun with our coyote skull, finding some little geodes. And we're gonna sit here in our Christmas gifts to ourselves, our <laughs> little reclining chairs, and have some hot brown and enjoy a sunset. And we'll see you guys next video.